Hello guys, Jerry Lawrence Business. Very, very special guest. This is Sadi. Sadi is a cinematographer, photographer, videographer, and um, budding filmmaker. I met him in 2018. Great dude, very cool dude. And I wanted to bring him on because I love interviewing business owners. That's one of the things we do on this channel. And I would love to hear Sadi's story. And I know he's got a lot of great lessons for aspiring entrepreneurs. <laughs> Oh, it's too kind. Yeah. Too kind. Yeah. Thanks for having me, man. Super glad to be here. Definitely. Okay, so Sydney, man, let's go through your journey. When in life did you decide I'm gonna do the entrepreneurial thing? I think it happened when I had that first like real job. Mm. You know? That first like real steady job. I don't mean I don't mean like the bullshit jobs. Like can I say bullshit? Is yeah, that absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. Okay. Um not like the bullshit jobs that you know are bullshit jobs that you don't plan to keep. But like, not like the Kinkos and the retail and the, you know, the mall and all that stuff. Like the first actual like grown man adult like job, you know, benefits and pays a decent wage and all that. Mm -hmm. So I'm living, you know, living a good life. I'm, I'm, I'm in this place, awesome place, working with an awesome team doing, you know, pretty, pretty substantial work. And as an editor, you know, so I'm kind of working in my field, you know. And uh, yeah, I was enjoying a steady paycheck. And dude, every, I, I will tell you the moment when the light bulb went off, I wasn't taking vacations because I had been a gig worker and, you know, freelancer and all that other stuff. So mm. I, you know, wasn't used to taking vacations. I'd never had a job where I was taking vacation time. This other guy comes on, he's taking his vacations. And I was like, oh yeah, vacation. I can put in for vacation. <laughs> so I put in for vacation and my boss, completely cool. I learned so much about leadership from her. Mm -hmm. Awesome lady. Um, she says to me, you know, completely neutrally, oh, okay. She's looked at my vacation request. She says, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll put it in. Uh, you know, we'll see about it. And if it works, you know, yeah, no problem. And what I heard was, oh, wait, you can say no? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm hearing too. When I'm hearing how she talked to you, it's like, oh, yeah, um, I can say no to the vacation. Even though it's not, that's not at all what she meant. You know, mm -hmm. she meant like, oh, that's cool. Oh, I'm glad that you're, I think she even said, oh, I'm glad you're finally putting it for a vacation because, you, you know, you deserve one and blah, blah, blah. But just the notion that, oh, it was such a firm reminder. Oh, wait a minute. I'm, I get to ask if I can have time off, like, yeah. which means they can actually say no. I'm of really course. not in control. And so that was that, you know, I had had like little inklings about like, I don't really like kind of being told what to do, when to do it, how to do it, you know, that kind of thing. There were some like moments, but that was like the one real like, yeah. I'm not cut out for that. And not that it was bad because that was such a cushy position. It was a recognition that if I stayed doing that, I was hiding out. That mm. I wasn't bringing my full funk to the fire. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that was a crystallizing moment. It's just like, oh, this is actually misaligned with who and what I am, with yeah. what I'm capable of. And I was blessed to have a mentor um, who had come in, you know, the guy that was actually uh, our broker, for the benefits package. He was just, you know, a really charismatic, effective guy. I loved his presentation. I loved who he was. He had a hot daughter. I won't lie. <laughs> um, and, um, and I, I just met with him afterwards. Cause I just like, like, you know, I like your vibe. I like what you're about. You know, you built your company up, you know, you're doing this work and, um, you're successful at it. I, I want, I want to hear more about that journey was for you. And he was like, you know what, that's, that's going to take some time. Let's sit down and talk. And one of the first things he said to me on our first meal, um, he said, you know, I'm going to ask you, do you see yourself being a company man? Is the life that you're living right now, can you see yourself honestly doing it or not? And either answer is fine. But look, take a look inside and tell me honestly if you can live this life for the rest of your life. And I looked at him and it was the first time I said it out loud. I looked down and I was like, I mean, I could just feel my head shaking. Like, nah, I, I, I can't do it. So... Here we are. Long that's answer, great. but that's the true answer. No, that that's great, man. You know, we all have like a moment, right? And it's like once you recognize the moment, you went for it. Um, I think for me, just for you, I recognized the moment many times, but I didn't go for it. Yeah. And the really funny thing is if I just went for it that first time, I probably wouldn't have taken – as many kind of like side steps. The thing is, the more you don't go for it, the more you develop ineffective suboptimal habits and behaviors to not succeed entrepreneurially. So you have to go and fall and fall and fall as many times as quickly as possible. That's just my experience. No, I completely agree. I mean, dude, I, 
the first time, this isn't, this isn't even the first time I was in business. The first time I was in business for myself, I mean, it found me. Like, mm-hmm. it completely found me. I was serving uh, in the media ministry at this church, this big church in L.A., and I didn't even consider myself uh, a camera operator at the time, you know. Um, but it's a big church in L.A., so I'm, see, a lot of people see me walking around with a camera. And so they just, because it's L.A., they just assume, hey, you know, you're a camera guy. And, and so they started asking me, hey, can you shoot this thing? Can you shoot that thing? And I was like, oh, no, I don't really do that. I don't really do that. I don't really do that. Because I was like, I'm not really a camera person. And finally somebody asked me, um, hey, my friend's uh, having a wedding. You know, they, they need somebody to shoot it. You know, would you shoot it for them? And it was the first time I was like, you know, what happens if I said yes? And like that was my first like job and I got to produce it and hire a crew and do this wow. whole thing. And it was, it was like awesome and all of that. So it's like business found me and I still found a way to run from it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I still was kind of like, Oh wait, I'm in, I'm in business for myself. Like I have a crew, like I have yeah. people to hire. I have, you know, business to drum up. And even though I loved it because again, part of me, the real true part of me got activated yeah. by it. Um, I was also, kind of like what you said, kind of in my own head about like, yeah, oh, and yeah. am, I, am I doing this? Should I, should I be doing this? Like, this is kind of, oh, all right. And so I was sort of fumbling my way. Now, what's funny is that looking back, if I had really said yes to vision, right? Because I just fell into it. It found me. You know, people just like, hey, can, we want to pay you to do this. You want to do it? And I said, okay. But I didn't have vision, you know. Yeah. I, I, it was, I used to joke that it was good that no one asked me to shoot porn because I might have been like, well, maybe because I just said yes to everything. Like, oh, you want to shoot a wedding? Okay. You want to shoot a music video? Okay. We had a bunch of dancers um, want to shoot a, 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 a kind of like a showcase reel for them in the studio. Okay. You know, you, you shoot industrials? Okay. You know, we just we just said yes to everything. So there was no, I, I didn't have a unified vision. I wasn't really saying yes to what I was truly up to, yeah. you know, just sort of taking money. Yeah. Um and the lesson I learned from it was like, oh, okay, like looking back, it was like, oh, if I had unified vision, I could have made the mistakes I needed to make. I could have pivoted in the directions that, you know, I actually was served by. Um, and then I would have been on my way, kind of like what you shared, on my way, making the mistakes I needed to make, falling down, learning the lessons, you know, at that time, as opposed to this time. Yeah. Um, and it's all good. It all works out at the end of the day, I really feel like. But if anybody is listening that it has an idea just like you said hey this whole nine to five life doesn't work for me working for somebody else doesn't work for me or even more than that i have a vision of something something is inside of me trying to come out and i'm not saying yes to it the sooner like jerry just said the sooner you say yes to it talk to the camera the sooner you say yes to it the sooner you get to be who and what you really and truly are and that is awesome even if you don't have a vision, like I didn't have a vision for many years and part of me still feels like I don't have a vision. Even if you don't have a vision, still go for it because <laughs> right. it's better to go for it and find your vision than to try to find it when you're working for other people, miserable, realizing you're miserable because yeah. when you're in a state of misery, your mind doesn't work as well either, right? So either way, you should go for it. I used to listen to this uh, Les Brown, this motivational speaker that my mom would listen to like way back in the day. I met him once, you know, because this is L.A. Mm-hmm. I'm, <laughs> I've met him a couple of times around yeah. town. Um, but one of the things he says, you know, is like the fastest way to get on your back, get back on your feet is to miss two car payments. You know, when yes. you get out, yes. outside you of your comfort figure it zone, out very quickly. <laughs> you figure it out, right? If you stay, you stay in sort of the cushy job. I mean, it's not there's a way to be responsible about it. I will say, especially, you know, if you're of a certain age. And you got, you know, responsibilities. There's a way to do it responsibly. And there is the analysis paralysis could kill you. You know, yeah. I mean, could I, I, I know many entrepreneurs uh, in waiting that are basically paralyzed because, yeah. well, I'm waiting for the stars to line and I can't because of this and I can't and this and that, that responsibility. And yeah, the, the ducks don't line up until you're in the game. In my experience, my ducks didn't start lining up until I'm in the game. Yeah. And it's still in the game. And it's just like, even if I don't see f- but five feet in front of me, like all I need to see is where I get to take the next step. Yeah. Next, yeah. next indicated action. I love your that word analysis paralysis. Because again, I see so many entrepreneurs in training too, who like as an outsider, I can see where they can start. And I even tell them and they don't appreciate it. They get mad at me. They're like, Jay, I'm not going to start a blog about this. And I'm like, first of all, you know, I'm, I'm looking for out for you. But second, like, I'm just trying to point out an opportunity. Like I had this guy, he was working for the government. 
And he really, really wanted to be an entrepreneur, but he didn't know where to get started. And then he traveled the world for like a month just to get his mind off things. And I'm like, you can start there. You saw the right. world for a month. Start a right. blog. Start a YouTube right. channel about it. He's like, I'm not going right. to do it, man. I'm like, okay, right. you don't appreciate my advice. I'm just not going to give you advice anymore. But like analysis paralysis, he's probably in his head trying to get the stars to align. And the yeah. key is just have to let it align as in you just have to go for it. You, yeah. It's not like the stars will align and like shine down on you. You have to reach up for the stars. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I see, because um, I actually had a similar friend. Uh, I mean, she's this beautiful young girl, right? beautiful young girl, adventure spirit, you know, super resourceful, mm -hmm. um, very well spoken. Um, just a very, I'm like a natural, you know, fit for like a, uh, an adventure travel blog kind of thing. And she kind of had it in her head, you know, like, Oh, well maybe I'll start a blog. Maybe I'm just thinking, you know, written as she's planning these different trips. Right. And I'm saying, you know, you're sitting on a gold mine. Like, yes, what you already have is golden. And yes, you should write. And yes, and all that. And there's so much more you have to offer. Now, what, where her head was, and God bless her, she was actually able to take the leap, thankfully, because she heard me. Where her, her head was, was all the things that the real established travel pros do. And I can't do that. I don't have a drone that's going to fly over, you know, ruins in Rome and all of that. Like, you know, what's my little, you know, my little blog, who am I? What am I contributing to? It was like, she wasn't doing because she was comparing what she thought she had to all the already established folks out there. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? So she's like, where's my audience? You know, when they can look at that kind of thing and that comparison game. Um, I mean, that's, that's such a, before even getting started. Right. I think that there is value in identifying what's my brand, who's my audience on the front end, for sure, right, for sure. And I think that particular activity is best undertaken with the understanding that my audience exists because there's already people like me, yeah. people like me. If yeah. I think this way, if I like this stuff, there's probably, I can't be the only motherfucker on planet Earth yeah. <laughs> that thinks this way, you know. So coming at it from a place of possibility as opposed to, comparing myself to like oh well you know th this guy michael bay or you know <laughs> is doing explosions and now what am i a uh, transformer movie you know what i mean like that kind of comparison thing i've seen a lot of people get stuck on that as well yeah and truthfully yeah. that's that's been one of the things that at times has uh when i was younger not so much now but at times plagued me too it's just like oh well what do I, what's my little thing mm -hmm. you know what's my little stuff and my experience with myself was my thought about my little stuff was wholly inaccurate. Mm. You know, that my little stuff wasn't so little, but I needed to get out of my own head to see that it wasn't until I started doing it and other people saw it, other people who weren't me that I started to actually get an affirmation like, Oh, this actually does have value. This actually does have legs. People are actually responding to it. So I come from a culture that is very, very upward social comparing. They're mm. always, oh, starting from a young age, you know, this friend of yours has an A plus. Why don't you have an A plus in all your subjects, right? right? So what this does is, one, it keeps people in the rat race because they think there's only one way of getting to success. But two, it creates analysis paralysis because sure. they can't see exactly like what you said, Sidi, about they already have a lot going for themselves. All they can see is, but I'm not at that level. I'm not. That's not the point, especially growing up in the West where you can do your own thing, right? The point mm -hmm. is everyone has value to offer if you really just like worked an honest and, you know, life that you want to create value. Everyone has value to offer. And Absolutely. the sooner you see that, the sooner you're going to be like, oh, I got an audience. I got fans. I got friends. I got people that can derive value from whatever I do. Absolutely. I mean, that's the, that's the beautiful thing. I mean, to, to get sort of spiritual for a moment, you know, for those who do have some, um, some kind of spiritual context, I mean, what flower doesn't have value? Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, imagine something on this God's green earth, right? That is not ultimately and intrinsically valuable, you know? So here we are as human beings, like every one of us is unique. Everybody's got their own stuff. I mean, two people, 
you know, I got guys, we grew up on practically the same block, you know, went to the same school, you know, a lot of the same, me and my brother had the same parents. We couldn't be different as night and day, right? Everybody's unique. And we all, I experience us all as having our own unique gifts and talents to deliver to the world. Yeah. And then I think on the other side, man, can you imagine what would have happened? Like the loss if Prince had never picked up a guitar, Yeah, you know, if, Spielberg had never picked up a camera or, you know, anybody or if uh, Michelangelo had never decided he, you know, this, this whole art thing wasn't really going to work out anyway. You know what I mean? Saying there's, there's such contribution within everybody, mm -hmm. you know, that, that I've learned it myself, you know, who wants to go to the grave with their songs unsung? Yeah. You know, nobody, nobody. So when does the singing happen? Singing happens now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Especially now, because you know we, we we got time and space, right? Thanks to our friend Miss uh, Miss Rona. Yeah, yeah. We got Miss Rona we got exactly here, creating right? new opportunities, basically. New opportunities, yeah. dude. People are thriving right now. I was having a whole conversation with uh, I mean, because there's so much talk about, you know, lack limitation, um, what isn't have the unemployment rate being so crazy, markets tanking, and that kind of thing. And it's a trip to see how even in those conversations, there are businesses. There are people, I mean, we're on Zoom. Can you imagine having invested in Zoom, yeah. you know, before yeah. this? Holy cow. You know, I'm not making a mint, yeah. you know, or as the, uh, as the meat supply chain, you know, is breaking down, you know, like the, the, the Beyond Meat folks. I mean, their stock, I think it gained 30% in like one day Yeah. at one point a couple yeah. weeks ago. At one point, people were always saying, oh, yeah, local, you can't be sustainable. There's a reason why there's supply chains, but I'm sure a lot of more people are going to buy local, buy organic now, right? Right, right. All the trucks and stuff are just, you know, all that supply right. chain is not there anymore. Right. New opportunities, right? Yeah. New opportunities. Um, and I, I poo pooed myself. I had an idea. I swear to God, swear to God. I had an idea last fall, you know, end of not even last fall, end of last summer, you know, thinking about, hmm, uh, you know, people aren't going to the movie houses as much anymore, but I've seen social media really leverage uh, technology as a way of bringing people together. I wonder if there's some way to create, you know, uh, a movie going experience where people are brought together like in mass, like, huh, I want it. And I saw, like, just kind of had this idea last fall and I was thinking about it, I felt good about it. And I thought to myself, one of the things, and the reason I share the story is to encourage people who who might have this sort of self-sabotage thing. I thought to myself, yeah, but what's the market for that right now? Mm. You know, what's the market for that right now? Dude, had I moved on that, do you know what I could be doing right now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like right now, exactly at a time when people can't go to the playhouses and they, they, they can't go to the movie theaters yeah. and they're craving contact with other people, which is part of why Zoom is blowing up right now. Like, how could I have known there was a world pandemic just waiting for me, yeah. you know, yeah. to give me exactly the opportunity to, yeah. to bring forth that idea. So I share that. I mean, even though I was like a little heartbroken when I, when I realized that actually, cause I, I was talking it through with a buddy of mine mm -hmm. and he actually came back to me and he was like, dude, I've been thinking about that. I wish there was some way we could have gone back and figured it out. Cause Oh my God, where would be the service that we would be providing right now would have been incredible. Mm -hmm. um, so I was, I was bummed about it initially. Um, however, I share it because it let me know that there are ideas out there, right? Yeah. And that when we're open, you know, because I was open. I was yeah. like, what am I supposed to be doing? And I got something and I still didn't completely move on it. Yeah. But when we're open, like the, the, the mechanism works, being inspired works, like that entrepreneurial spirit, like it's, it's in there, yeah. you know? And so even though I didn't move on that one, I move on the next one. <laughs> yeah. My sort of analogous example is 2016, I was creating ASMR videos. You know, the videos like this. I was doing videos like that, but it hurt my voice. Mm. So instead of thinking about how I can make ASMR videos without hurting my voice, I stopped. Right. And the thing is, it was so easy to gain a following back then. Mm. And if I just kept going, it's, it's like exactly like you said, I would have been one of the biggest ASMR channels, but I didn't like, I still, I read all the comments because when I stopped making ASMR videos, I didn't even check that channel for years. Right. And they're like, where'd you go? Oh my God. <laughs> you're one of the best <laughs> ASMR guys I used to follow. Like wow. I didn't even try. I didn't even have, even have a good mic. It's all like analysis paralysis. In yeah. my mind, I said, Oh my God, this, that, this, that I'm not qualified when my voice hurts. But if I just like thought about adapting, just embraced it, 
Like, my life would have been different. Again, I'm not saying I would have wanted to be an ASMR guy, but why not, right? Right. The opportunity was there. Yeah, the opportunity-wise. And like you said, that, that's another reason why I said, you know what? I got to create this channel because I had an idea like this for years, and I'm like, you know what? Learning from that ASMR thing, I got to do it because if I don't do it, a few years later, I'll be like, oh, I could have been doing that, you know? Right, right. Well, see, and that's why I want to I want to acknowledge you and commend you for it understanding from learning from the lesson yeah right i was trying to tell i i was telling one of my uh i have a a, a client that i coach sometimes and i was telling her it was like look it's sometimes it's worth making the mistakes yeah right yeah. it's worth making them especially the really big ones it's worth making the really big ones when you learn from them yeah. you know yeah. and what i'm hearing you say is that you learned from that yeah. even though you pissed away that whole opportunity without even realizing you were pissing it away like it inspired you ultimately to do what you're doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and going back spiritually, I have to say the more you start trusting that spiritual voice you know, mm-hmm. from God or something, I think that really helps you too, because that's a way to get past analysis paralysis. If you're too in this worldly head, this worldly environment, you, you know, it's like, but once you move beyond it, you're like, no, there's something else. And something else is telling me, ignore all this chatter, this distraction. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's my kind of like um, segue f- uh, from that earlier thing you mentioned. Yeah. Faith. Yeah. Having faith. Right. And having faith in yourself, having faith in the process, having faith in your own creative ability, having faith in the inspiration that's guiding you in the first yeah. place. That's how I'm hearing that. Yeah, exactly. And I agree with you. you know, yeah. I agree with you. I mean, who who starts a novel, you know, knowing every page that's going to happen between the beginning and the end? You know, it's it's undertaken by faith right and there's a lot of novels written so you know odds are good that if you start you know yours is going to be okay too you know what i mean that's that's how i hear that and congratulations on this channel man like this is this is cool like to to ask the interviewer questions how has this been for you i've learned a lot of lessons from so many channels and you also see that there's differences in the algorithm but the key is once you decide to do something new it, it builds up new brain connections too, right? So you can feel your brain sure. growing again, which is what all of us crave ultimately. I love that. It's like the learning something new, yeah. right? It's stimulating growth and development. Like I yeah. have a friend who's, you know, just learning a lang- new language right now just because she can. Yeah. Um, and there's opportunity. Yeah. And there's something about, you know, what that's going to lead to also. Yeah. yeah. It's like, okay, well, because she learned this thing, you know, that, created a way for her to do that thing and then that ultimately led to her to traveling for yeah. instance yeah. um traveling abroad or even like myself like you know i was volunteering right for this church like i didn't consider myself a camera operator and i mm-hmm. thought that was like you know that's what other people that are like real camera geeks like that's you know i'm i'm the director i don't yeah. really i don't hold the camera i don't mm-hmm. know all lighting what is all that you know and because i was because i said yes to it anyway and I learned how to operate a camera anyway, you know, the most basic sort of function. Um, and I was like, oh, actually, I'm pretty good at it, mm. you know. And what that ended up leading me to, I mean, even how I how I came to photography. You know, I was I went to a model meetup as a videographer, mm. planning to shoot video, you know. Yeah. And just just kind of you know, just to kind of archive the 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 experience. And so here I am with this DSLR camera, you know, shooting video. And the other uh, real photographers <laughs> had already gone and there were models were still like, you know, available. Uh, and, one of them, and one of them said, Hey, do you want to shoot? You know, not realizing I was the video guy. Cause again, I have this DSLR. It looks like a regular camera. Yeah. And again, I was thought about like saying, no, no, I'm just the, you know, I'm just doing video. I'm gonna, but then I was like, you know what? Why not? You know? Um, and it was so much fun. I had an absolute ball mm-hmm. and, I, I never looked back. I was obsessed with photography after that. I was like losing sleep. I wasn't working out. I was losing weight. Wow. <laughs> I was up at night. You know, I was like learning and learning and like photo editing and shooting and, you know, made models after model after model after model and just shooting like crazy. And again, all of it because ultimately I just said yes. You know, I put myself in a position to find that inspiration that you talked about that it's yeah. sort of inspiring force that just like and yeah man it just like moved through like wildfire like dude man there's there's just nothing like being inspired yeah. Yeah. so 
I with you all the way. And yeah, having faith with it, didn't know where it was going to lead, didn't know what it was going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, started doing executive headshots, you know, been shooting, you know, downtown LA on top of you know, like helipads and things like that, you know, executives kind of thing, which has been super fun. Um, mm-hmm. Been able to, again, bring in, bring in a nice crew and, and uh, pay people again, which has been super fun. So yeah, and again, none of that. I had none of that in mind when I just, you know, met at WeWork. I met a I met a uh, a model at WeWork who was running these model meetups. That's uh, right. Um, Alex Morehouse. Alex shout Morehouse. out to Alex Morehouse. Great girl. Uh, shout out to Alex Morehouse. I need to yeah. interview her for this channel too. Dude, I'm gonna reach out to her. Uh, do do it. Do yeah. it. She's on it. Yeah. That that girl is laser. Brains She's and beauty, razor man. Sharp. Brains and beauty. Razor sharp. Yeah. yeah. Do that, Alex Morehouse. Yep. Yeah. Definitely exactly. shout out to the, the gypsy, the TGS crew. The gypsy exactly. Chef. The gypsy chef. TGS yeah. crew. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'll send this to her too. So give her nice. a shout out. Nice. Yeah, please um, do. So, dude, City, it's really cool because you embrace kind of the entrepreneurial life. You went from videography to photography. Tell me about the filmmaking. When did you say, okay, um, I think it's time to kind of like look at movies too. Thank you for asking, dude. The filmmaking thing has actually already always been there. Mm-hmm. Like that's why, you know, with the film school, because, um, yeah, but like for me, it was like Boys in the Hood changed my life. Mm-hmm. You know? I remember like sitting in the theater and I was like, like numb, like, that just happened. Like, oh my god! Like, I, I could, I couldn't move. You know, uh, it was just, it was just like dumbstruck. I was like, I, I know them. I, I know him. Like, I, mm, I, you know, I, yeah. so it was just like the power, the power of filmmaking was just very real to me at that point. And so I knew I had it at that point. Um, but again, to talk about saying yes to the vision, right? Yeah, yeah. Saying, saying yes to reality. After I got out of film school, um, you know, I was working for a film company and you know, doing this and that. And I said to myself, uh, you know, I had all these film ideas, short film ideas. And I said, ah, I just haven't directed anything in a while. I took a class to remind myself and I'm sitting in the class. I'm like, what am I doing? I already know how to do this. You know, so like, which is another thing that people, people sometimes do is think uh, they don't already have what it takes to do a thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, go try to learn some more. You know, I was guilty, guilty as charged. And yeah, sitting in there learning some more, I was like, yeah, I don't need to learn anymore. Like, I just need to go out and actually do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And so I, I had all this, all these ideas, but all these super slick, all these really crazy, cool, um, film, short film ideas. Mm-hmm. And I heard my, my, my film teacher in, in my head who said, you know, make something that I, where I can see your passion, you mm-hmm. know, make something that actually means something to you. You know, don't tell a joke, tell a story. And so I said, you know what? I haven't directed anything in a while. I'm going to do this little teeny tiny little micro budgeted thing, you know, kind of experimental, you know, it'll just be for me. I don't even really got to show it to anybody just to kind of get back in the swing of things. You know, people aren't even necessarily going to get it. Just make it super personal and just whatever, you know, so I can just stretch on being, um, you know, a a true storyteller again. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I make this little movie, um, just three guys in a room talking, a monologue driven piece. And skeleton crew, you know, bare lights, but I make it super personal and I make it, in, you know, just something that I felt good about, right? And I just happened to, the, again, coincidence, because I said yes, the guy in the cubicle across from me um, happened to be one of the programmers for the LA Film Festival. And so I was cutting it one night and I said, Hey, Stence, you know, check this out. What do you think? You know? And I just literally meant like, does this even make sense to you? Like, yeah. Nah, 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 yeah. You know? Like I, 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 no agenda whatsoever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it might've even been about like the quality of the, of the, wasn't a print, the quality of the dub at that point. Yeah. And he looked at it and he's like, we got to submit this to the festival. I'm going to walk us over to the festival right now. <laughs> no, I- and you know, no submission feed, no anything. He literally, he on his own took my tape, walked over to the festival programmers and said, watch this. And just like that, I became a festival filmmaker <laughs> at the nice. LA Film Festival. You know, my first film, you know, premieres at LAFF. Um, and so that's, that's how that started. And it was, again, just a crazy opportunity that almost didn't know how I found, you know, but it started yeah. with saying yes, yeah. you know. Um, and not and not being just cutesy, you know, but just honestly saying yes to vision, mm-hmm. even though at the time I literally thought, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. People aren't even going to get it. I'm going to understand yeah. it. You know, none of that. None of that mattered. It went on. It played across, uh, 
U.S. and a few spots in Canada as well. Wow. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah. It's all about just trying. I remember in college, you know, I, I haven't made a documentary for a while, right? But I was making a documentary and it wasn't even finished yet. But I just said, you know what? It kind of has a stopping point here. Let's just try it. And I submitted it to a bunch of film festivals and it got in one. So, you know, just like, just try it, right? You never know. Exactly. Yeah. Just jump in. The water's yeah, fine, baby. In. And jump like, I got in. to know a lot about film festivals. Like, if I didn't submit to film festivals, I wouldn't have known that, like, almost every day, I think um, Mrs. Corona has changed this, but back in the day, every day there was like a film festival. So, you, if you really want it, you could get into a film festival every day if you wanted to. It's not economically oh, yeah. sound, but you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's plenty of them. Yeah. I'm plenty of them. I mean, no, living here in LA, you, know, you can't keep track of them. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. For that reason. So, no, I, I, I agree with you. If, if there's anything, and I, actually, I can pose this question to you, too. If there's anything that you could tell young Jerry, you know, uh, that you wish, not wish you could reach back and tell him, but if there's any, any other young Jerry's out there, mm -hmm. if there was something that you wanted them to know, what would it be? Um, this is actually a great segue to my next question. So, here's what I would say, okay? Um, think twice about going to college. Don't just go to college because your parents are telling you to go or because, um, you know, you deserve to go to college or whatever. Think about what you want in life and it's okay to take some time off before. That's what I would tell every young Jerry because I did not know what I was doing in college and all I was doing was wasting my parents' money. Mm. I mean, I got half scholarship. So yes, it wasn't just wasting my parents' money completely. I was wasting the endowment money at my college. But, you know, that segues into my next question. How, you know, for people who are thinking about continuing their higher education, we hear a lot about the higher education bubble. We hear a lot about maybe go to trade school. We hear a lot about just work. We hear a lot of, especially aspiring filmmakers that would just say, no, just move to LA, man. Just like go for it. Where do you stand on all of that? You know, you went to film school. You have your MFA, right? Where would you stand on all of that? A, it is a different time. It is a different time because, um, you know, remember, I, I came up pre-internet, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, not when it is, it, not what it is now, you know, so especially for undergrad. Um, what, what I would say is this, it is unique to different people. There is no one true track mm -hmm. like they're like, you know, sort of conventional with anyone who says, you know, conventional wisdom like that. It's a new, it's a new day now. Mm -hmm. um, so there's lots of possibilities for those who are very clear on who they are, what they're about, what they're capable of or what they want to do. I mean, I like what you're saying in terms of like, you know, go out there and, and mess around a little bit before you get yourself in tens of thousands of thousands of dollars of debt, mm -hmm. you know, because that, that will force some issues once you're out of school, Yeah, you know, having sort of having those responsibilities, unless, you know, you're able to, like, I was blessed to, um, to go to undergrad mostly for nothing because mm -hmm. I was a smart kid. And I could get scholarships. Um, so, but again, I was super clear when I was growing up in Detroit that I was going to get the hell out of Detroit. Mm. <laughs> and so the way I was going to get the hell out of Detroit was someone's going to pay me to go to college. So again, I was super clear about that at a, at a pretty young age. So I was blessed to make that happen. Mm -hmm. um, so again, that worked for me. Um, now, say somebody doesn't have necessarily that kind of, that particular circumstantial fire under their butt to kind of force that issue you know they have more of a you know what are my choices going to be kind of neutral place then yeah i would say the internet's a fantastic place there are very few um college professors in my opinion that are going to teach you something that you are ultimately not going to best learn by actually doing yeah you know um there's some awesome college professors uh, and there's a lot of college, but I mean, I, I hate to say it. Um, and a lot of those who teach are those who haven't done, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that that's like a joke, right? They say those who can do those who can't teach. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, in terms of film school, you know, that is largely true. Now what film school can be is an awesome bubble for experimentation. Mm. Um, now, but again, that takes a certain kind of student, you yeah. know, a certain level of dedication. 
Yeah, a certain, and a certain uh, level of DGAF, so to speak. Like, I don't right. care what people think. Right. Even exactly. in this bubble, you know, people will judge. I don't care. I'm just going to experiment. Absolutely. It's a safe place to make those mistakes you were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's some people. Uh, God, what's that guy's name? Um, oh, fuck, I'm blanking on his name right now. Um, so I went to CalArts, and there was a guy who went to my program a few years before me. Mm-hmm. And now he was a little bit of means, but he was able to really leverage the system. Mm-hmm. So at CalArts at that time, there were, you know, Disney board members, you know, sitting on the, sitting on the board of directors. Wow. Cool. Um, and at that time they also had sort of student, they had student representatives who could come and sit on the board and kind of be in relationship with the board. And so he made a point to like, make a make a short film every year a high quality short film every year that he was in film school um he made a point to get himself nominated as a student representative you know to the board so he could then build relationships with the people on the board so that when he graduated he went straight on into professional filmmaking you know now again he was super clear and he leveraged the hell out of an influential network of people Mm -hmm. um that's the exception not the rule so, yeah, there for him for that story, and he went on to do a few different feature films um, that you know met with some commercial success. Um, but for every him, there's fifty, a hundred, two hundred others who didn't necessarily do that. Who you know got some PA gigs and you know are now teaching at you know state colleges somewhere themselves. Yeah. So it really is a mixed bag, but it comes down to, in my opinion, it really comes down to know thyself. Yeah. I think the more, and the more committed, the more committed one is, the more they understand their own commitment, the more they understand their own tolerance for risk. Yeah. The more they understand their, um, their threshold for being uncomfortable, for not knowing, you know, what's necessarily ahead. You know, those are, those are decisions that we all get to make. Uh, yeah. in the moment. But I will say that, you know, no, sorry for the long answer, but I will say that it's, it's ultimately at this time in history, there are so many avenues that are open uh, to the right people who are willing to work hard enough to endure some of the hardship to really find the one that works for them. Yeah. And City, I really love what you say about know thyself, because even that example of networking, right? I get a lot of people, not a lot, but I get some students who, who are going to my alma mater right now, reaching out to me, asking for advice, but how I can't really give them much pointers except the general stuff if I don't know exactly what they want, right? And I was like that in college too. Sometimes I would reach out to alum or I would reach out to famous people and they'd actually reply to me, but like, I wasn't clear what I wanted. Mm-hmm. So like, See, if you don't know thyself and you just kind of network blindly or just kind of just, you know, go about college like I went about college, you're wasting your time. And yeah. again, there is something to be said about finding yourself that way. But if you can just devote some time to knowing thyself, that will save you so much wasted opportunity cost in the future. Dude, there's no there's no excuses nowadays. I mean, so much is available at, at a keyboard. You know, so much information is available at a keyboard. Yeah. Like, who am I? What do I want? Who's who does who's doing the things that I like doing? Yeah. How do they do it? What did it look like? What was their path like? Huh? What questions arise in me about that? What would that look like now? Huh? Yeah. I might be able to just ask them. You know what I mean? But again, I hear you. It's a specif- specificity, right? Yeah. As opposed to like, oh, I just want to network with you. I want to keep in touch with you. Like, okay, that's cool. Uh, who are you? Like not just like who are you in terms of like Hollywood, what do I want from you, but like who are you? Are you a writer? Are you a director? Are you this? Are you are that? Like where are you in your, where are you in your journey? Like yeah. what would be of service? Yeah. Like I asked, you know, my business mentor specifically, hey, how did you build this business? How did you get to where you are? Yeah. You know, because I'm working this job. I'm not going anywhere. You know, some of the, my best working years of my life are, are being spent here. Yeah. And I like what I see where you are and I want to know how you got there. Yeah. Super specific, super specific. He knew exactly what to tell me and he knew exactly what kind of guy he was, t- he was talking to when I said that to him. Um, it wasn't supposed to just like, Hey, you're kind of cool and you're self-made. That's just uh, you know, let's just stay in touch. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's cool. But what does that really mean? Exactly. You 
or my example, like I knew I wanted to do something related to media, but I didn't know exactly what, right? So, um, you know, they'd be like, oh yeah, so do you want to be an actor? Do you want to be a producer? Uh, do you want to be on set? Do you want, and I'd be like, uh, 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 <laughs> right? right. <laughs> like, right. So, of course, they're not going to really stay in touch with me or because I didn't make an impression, right? Yeah. He's just some lost dude. Yeah, I can help many lost people in this world, but you know, my time's limited too. So, yeah. You know, I, I know other people who they reached out to some of their, and then like halfway through the conversation, they're like, oh, I'm actually also into this. Can you give me advice on that? Well, it's like, well, why did I just give you all this advice on something if you turned out you were interested in that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Specific, specificity of focus, <laughs> I think is super important. And again, I didn't have it, yeah. you know, when I was young either. It's one of those, you know, learning lessons. But the sooner you have it, the more you can, more effectively you can leisure, leverage the time that you have, Yeah. you know. And as you said, then you can also leverage the resources available to you, including via networking. Yeah. Um, so no, can't agree more. And yeah, and again, in the information age, like, dude, just look it up. What are you interested in? Who's doing it? Where do they come from? What are they like? What's their journey? Like, you can learn so much of it. It's not like how it used to be in the old days. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, there's no, there's no excuse not to. I was watching myself. the movie Dark City yesterday, and that movie is very like a timepiece type of si uh, type of movie. And they were using phone books, and I was telling my friends I was watching with them like, "Oh, remember the days of phone books? You actually had to look people up on a phone book." Man, oh, yeah. we, times have changed. Times have so changed. I remember, uh, this is bad. I remember calling um, calling a, a restaurant, um that served this type of food. I think it was like Armenian or something like that. This was in the nineties. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I had seen it, you know, driving around. I had occasion to like need to know what the Armenian flag looked like pre-internet. So I go through the phone book and I find this restaurant that serves Armenian food. And I call them to ask them what their flag looks like. Nice. Like this day and age, yeah. you just go to Google Armenian flag. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> there yeah. it is. Yeah. No phone book. No conversation, no like the, no guy wondering like, wait, why are you calling me about a flag? Like, what yeah. the hell? Am I yeah. offended right now? I like, yeah, I know it sounds bad, but yeah. So no, I I hear you, man. It's it's so much easier nowadays. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's no excuses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But and I mean, work. we've gone over a lot already, but I think I will ask you this also: What was like a mistake you made when when you like went on your entrepreneurial path that Going back, you, you're like, ah, for aspiring entrepreneurs, um, remember this. Dude, I made so many mistakes. Um, I don't even know where to start. Um, but I say, you know, make, make your mistakes. I mean, it's almost like not making enough mistakes in a mm -hmm, sense mm -hmm. and not learning from them. Yeah. Those are the, those are the, those are the two, those are the two really big ones. Yeah. You know, like it's one thing, like when I started, I was like paying people under the table. I was not doing stuff like legit. I was just mm -hmm. like fly by night you know, by my seat of my pants, like for real, um, production insurance. What is that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and so, yeah, no, I wasn't, I wasn't doing it the right way. I didn't pay for it, thankfully, uh, because I learned, you know, but that was, you know, that's not something that I would, that I would do again. Mm -hmm. Um, I did not have vision. I referenced that earlier. I wasn't, I didn't have a unified vision. Um, I was letting the work come to me as opposed to setting an intention and a declaration about who I was and what we were bringing into the world. Mm -hmm. um, so I would definitely not make that mistake again. Um, and I would definitely say, again, we go back to know thyself, you know, yeah. know thyself, know thyself, yeah. know, yeah. know what you're about. And it's um, funny. I'm going to give a shout out to my friend Wolfgang because Wolfgang's one of those guys, right? He, he, he like, I want to be a serious actor. I don't want to do comedic stuff. And it's like, he knows thyself. It's like, I love to like poke fun at it. I'm like, dude, you're a funny guy, man. Like, why don't you help me out with funny stuff? But in his mind, he's like, no, I want to be a serious actor. I don't want to, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to. So it's like, that's great because then he can accept and reject work. He knows his focus. Right? Yeah. So I'm giving yeah. him a shout out too. So I'm going to, I'm going to put his, if you guys want to find out more about Wolfgang, <laughs> you guys can follow us in the description of the pinned comments. But like, it's, a, it's a perfect actor. example because I think, Earlier on in his life, he was more just, oh, if this is cool, I'll try it. And then, and then he realized, no, time's limited. You know, I don't want to do comedy roles if that's going to make me the funny person. I don't want to be the funny person. I want to be the leading man because I got the look. I got the experience. I got the talent, right? So I want to be the leading man. So it's great that he had the focus. He had that, like, clarity of mind to be like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Dude, I know a guy. 
I, I swear. To you. And he was saying this for years, for years. You, you ask him, what does he want? You? I mean, this, this is a guy who at one point was effectively homeless, you know, and it didn't, you know, he had a PO box is how you could get a hold of him. Wow. And what you would say, if you ask him what he was about, he would say like verbatim, you know, I am working with tomorrow's champions who inspire the next generation. Mm. I am working with tomorrow's champions who will inspire the next generation. Like guy who's homeless. Wow. <laughs> He's saying that, right? Like verbatim. And you tell anyone who listened, well, what are you doing? Oh, I'm working with champions. Tomorrow's champions who are inspiring the next generation. That's what he say. Years later, that guy is now training uh, boxers for the U S Olympic team. Wow. You know what I mean? True story. Wow. He held on that intention, was super clear about it, enrolled me and anybody else that that's who he was, regardless of his present circumstances. You know, he caught the vision of who and what it was, and he has realized it. He's manifested it. Wow. So it's possible, dude. It is absolutely possible. That yeah. Words have power for sure. Yeah, yeah. And then I think it's good to also talk about the other end of things, which is, when should someone call it quits, right? When should we realize, all right, this is a falling moment and let's learn from it. Let's pick ourselves up and let's do it better. Like, do you have any advice for that? Because, you know, sometimes there's something in psychology called a sunk cost bias. You put so much into it. You think I put so much into it. I need to keep going, but it's not right for you or you're not doing it correctly. Or there's something that needs to be fixed, but you're not because all you can think of it is I've already done it this way already. And I just have to keep doing it this way. I think it's adaptability, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, one of my favorite stories is Walt Disney. I mean, I mean, God, that man's, that man's story. Look up Walt Disney's story if you get mm -hmm. a chance. I mean, it's not funny now because, you know, his name is a worldwide brand. Yeah. Um, but, dude, he had so many opportunities to give up. Um, he had so many opportunities where it's like things went, not just give up, where things like when he was almost successful and things went completely sideways. Mm -hmm. You know, when he, uh, he had like a whole, pre-Mickey, you know, he had a whole Oswald the uh, rabbit kind yes. of thing. You know, and that whole thing. And then when Oswald was stolen out from underneath him, you know, when he built up a studio and then the the competing studio, like, took all of his guys, hired them all out from underneath him. When he did make a couple movies, they lost money, you know. So it's like time after time after time, you know, here's a guy who could have, should have given up necessarily. Um, but instead of giving up, he just adapted, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and that's why he's, his, his name is a worldwide brand to this day. And I think that, so there's a difference between adapting and succumbing, mm. right? So yes, adapt. Don't throw good money after bad, right? Learn from your mistakes. Uh, it doesn't, didn't work for me to shoot everything, anything and everything under the sun. Yeah. You know, shoot whoever paid me, you know? And like today would be like VR porn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> doesn't serve me. I'm not, I'm not a big pornographer. Like, yeah. you know, that's not really my deal. Yeah. So it doesn't really serve me to just sort of take the money wherever it is because it can just sort of lead me. Right. So that's a pivot. Does that mean I should, you know, put down a camera? And does that mean I should like set up, stop shop? I mean, the, the, I had a project go completely sideways on me once and it was like, it broke, it broke my heart. I mean, mm -hmm. I put so much into it. I was so inspired. I had, it was an amazing experience and it just like went crash and burn. It hurt. Yeah. <laughs> it hurt. And I was disillusioned. I was absolutely disillusioned. I was like, what was the point? What, why did I do that for? Why did I put so much into that? I, you know, just so much time in my life. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It was a bitter pill, but I kept going. Mm -hmm. And then guess what? Without me having to do anything else about it, things came around mm. and the project actually the ship got righted, you know, um, because I did it. Whereas if I had just been like, you know what, F that F you yeah. all of that, which I thought about doing <laughs> for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, it wouldn't have come back. You know, I just mm. would have been mad and righteous, but because I stayed with it, even though it hurt, I stayed with it. And I was like, you know what? It, it crashed and burned. It hurt. I don't know what to do with this. It hurts. Okay. I mean, I'm still here. I'm still here. And that allowed it to pivot. So and come back ultimately. So now it's something that I'm still ultimately very proud of, yeah. you know, where it did not look like that at all. It was just like, it would look like everything just died. So my, my, my invitation 
to myself and to all other entrepreneurs and all other artists and all other people out there with, with dreams is to don't sell out on your dreams mm. is to don't succumb to the, Oh, well, I guess this means I can't. Um, the difference between those who do and those who don't really is persistence. Yeah. You know, nothing yeah. that was created wasn't that was worth anything, you know, necessarily happened easily overnight. Um, again, doesn't mean adapt, learn, learn from mistakes, learn from mistakes. Yeah. That's what they're there for. Yeah. You know, at the same time, do what it is that you are here to do. Say yes to the vision. Yeah. And, the, and that makes the world a better place. Yeah, because fewer miserable people. If more people go for what right. they want to do, right, yeah. right. See, I feel you. More inspired yeah. people on the planet means more, more awesome things in the planet, yeah. more awesome structures in the planet, more happy people, and that's going to create other awesome people because they're like, oh, well, look at him, Jerry's happy. Oh, what he's doing? Yeah. Oh, what he's yeah. doing? I'm going to follow yeah. him. What yeah. Oh, well, if he can do it, I can do it too. Yes. Yeah. In fact, yes, you can. That's why we're here. And yeah, it's man. funny you mentioned the word pivot because. In my previous talk with Jonathan Kowalski, another great entrepreneur, he said the word pivot too. So I love that word. That's the word. I think that's the word of 2020. <laughs> think oh, about yeah. pivot. A don't give up. Pivot. <laughs> don't succumb. Don't keep doing something if it doesn't work for you. But also don't like go the other 180, right? The key is pivot. Yeah. Pivot. It's like, you know, don't go. I'm going to totally... Yeah, don't go this and this. If both of these don't work, look at all these angles you could pivot, right? You got all this. You could go this way, you could go this way, you go this way. Just don't go just go this way and don't go this way if both of them don't work. Absolutely. Yeah. No, and that's a and that's an important skill. Yeah. Right. I was talking to my dad. Um I mean again, this there's, there's so much opportunity out there. Yeah. You know, he used to he was working for a, a G he's a GM exec for a long time. Um, you know, Detroit. Uh, he got bought out with a sort of spinoff company that was still doing automotive stuff, but they ended up with this other company and he's telling me about what they, what they used to do. Mm -hmm. Swear to God, all they used to do is make the little plastic handles that people pull on, on cars, mm -hmm. just little, little plastic handles, you know, not even something I would even necessarily think about as an automotive part, but technically, you know, and the two guys, that started this company have now spun off their jink, janky little door handle company. And now they make all kinds of auto parts for all kinds of automakers. And it's a, it's a worldwide auto supplier, you know, wow. it's a billion, a billion dollar enterprise now. And it, it came from them just pivoting. You know, I mean, one of the guys that started the company used to make lawnmower engines. Wow. You know? <laughs> well, and him and his boy said, oh, you know, there's a, there's a market, you know, this car company needs some door handles. You know, I know guys who can put that together. Let's just do it. You know, pivoting and building and building and building and building and building. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. now look at him. Yeah. So I, I completely agree. Like, yeah, 2020 is a, an awesome year to pivot. And yeah, there's so many different ways it can look. Um, and I think the world is, is inviting us to do so right now yeah you know i think the future belongs to those who choose proactively to adapt you know it's not about going backwards it's about going forwards yeah. in my view yeah so uh yeah i'm with you man <laughs> and <laughs> i feel you brother dude thank you city and that's my final question for you what mm -hmm. is next for you mm, great question so yeah kind of like Kind of like what we've been talking about, you know, about pivoting and and being true to one's own vision. So I uh, I wrote a novel, um, and I am near the completion of that of the publication of the novel. Mm -hmm. uh, novel's being prepped for publication. Uh, screen adapting the novel, uh, so there's going to be a, a film version of it. Uh, that I'm public um, that I am not publicly independently uh, producing. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, as I'm still doing my editing, still doing my photography, still doing my videography stuff, because that's a part of how I just kind of keep my chops going. Yeah. And creatively, it's really about saying yes to the media arts and entertainment company, mm. and, you know, because that's where I'm at. And again, I feel like I agree completely with you that the world needs more inspired people doing inspired work. And that's most, that's what most inspires me. 
mm-hmm. is, uh, you know, I used to say that, uh, like, I'm a credit not to John Singleton necessarily for inspiring me through Boys in the Hood. I'm a credit to those who inspired him. Mm. Right. I feel like inspiration skips a generation. So what yeah. I'm really after are not the people so much the people who are inspired by what I do, but because they are so inspired by what I do, they have gone on and done their own and are inspiring others. That's what I'm really after. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm really after people who may not even know who I am, you know, ultimately, but are part of my lineage of inspiration. Mm-hmm. So that's what I dream of. Thank you for asking. Dude, that, that was a beautiful answer, man. Wow. <laughs> that was a beautiful answer. So for those of you watching, I will put CD's information, everything, all the stuff we talked about, it'll be in the description and it'll be in the pinned comments. So follow along. And Sadi, this is the year of pivots. So I would love to bring you back in a few months. We could yeah. catch up, especially as we hear more about your projects coming along. Um, and for viewers watching, as the channel grows, as more people stumble on this video, make sure, leave your questions for Sadi. You know, Sadi is a Happy great to, dude. Happy to and answer. And what I love about Sadi is there's this kind of like mentality in LA. There's this kind of like stereotype that LA people tend to flake a little. Sadi doesn't flake, you know. Sadi honors his promises, and I think that's why he's had the success. He's had the inspiration he's had. So, you know, I like good people like this. So we will keep updated with Sadi's journey. Awesome. Jerry, you're a good dude. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you, man. So for those of you watching, this was Jerry Learns Business. I will stop recording now, Sadi. We can keep talking. Uh, for those of you watching, thank you so much. Keep creating.